Alright, I am going to show you how to do a continuity test and how to check a diode with your multimeter. My meter I have here is just one of these Dawson 645s. And one of the first things you want to do is make sure it's set to the diode test. That's the little symbol you're looking for. This one's also one that makes tones when you use the continuity test, and I'll show you that in a moment. But what we want to do is plug in our probes. So, our black probe is going to go into the com. Then our red probe is going to go right here where you have a V for volts. That horseshoe looking symbol stands for ohms. That little pointed triangle with a line, that is the diode symbol. And then this particular one has a hertz meter as well, so this would be where I'd put it if I want to look at hertz. But, so that's plugged into there. Now, it's all set and ready, and all I have to do is just power it on. If I take my two meter leads, hear that tone? It's telling me that it's connected. And you can see it has a little resistance on there, 2.6 to 2.8, something like that. And, well, my meter needs a little bit of adjustment, but I'm used to that. So I know that that still represents good continuity, 0.0, .0 in a way. What this test helps us determine is if we have any bad traces, or if maybe a fuse is blown. Uh, so if you're replacing a part on a circuit board, and all of a sudden it's not working. You could have lifted your solder pad, breaking the trace to wherever it needs to go on the circuit board. And one way to find that out is using a continuity test. And a great way to give you an example of what it's really doing is to kind of look at a piece of wire. Obviously this is just a straight piece of wire. It's not broken. It's one solid wire. So if you were to put anything on one end, Whatever is coming through should happen on the other end. Now, I'm going to hook my leads up to these gator clips. And you'll see that my meter will start to beep. There we go. Now, you also notice that the resistance is a little higher. It's about 2.9 to 3.0. That's because the wire itself has a little bit of resistance. And that's going to happen. Uh, but it's still good. It still will work perfectly fine. So if you come up to a trace and you test it, and your meter is doing this, then you know that that trace is good. And the same goes with a fuse. If you were to touch the ends of the fuse uh, with your probes, and it's a good fuse, you'll get a zero continuity or a tone on your meter, like mine's doing. Now, if the wire or filament in the fuse is broken, or the trace is bad on a circuit board, it won't tone. And the best way to show that is kind of like with this wire. So you have a solid wire. It's making, you know, connection all the way across. There's no damage with it. Now, if you were to damage a trace or damage a wire where it gets cut or broken, you have no connection. So that's one way to find out. Now, to do with fuses, it's the exact same thing. You got two different types. You have fast blow fuses, which is basically a fuse with a super small wire inside of it. And then you have slow blow fuses, which the filament inside is much thicker. It's the same thing. If the fuse is good, you'll get a reading. Now, if the fuse was blown or bad, it wouldn't make a beep like this. It wouldn't do it at all. This is another good fuse. Now, the exact same test on your meter can also help you test diodes. Now, Diodes have polarity. 
which means one end is positive and the other end is negative, otherwise known as an anode and a cathode. The anode is the positive point and the cathode is the negative point. And the way you can tell is the black band. Or the white band, actually. The white band on here represents the cathode, which is the negative. And when you test a diode, what you're looking for is to make sure that it allows flow in only one direction. It doesn't allow electricity to flow backwards. So, what we do is, the first test we'll do is we take our red meter lead and we put that on the anode, which is here. And then we take the black meter lead and we put it on the cathode. And we're looking at our meter, we have 523.7 to 524.8 something in that range, which is great. Now, when we flip these leads around and put the black lead on the anode and the red lead on the cathode, we should not receive any reading, which we don't. And that's an excellent working diode. Now, it's best to test diodes out of circuit boards. If you have a diode in the circuit board, you run the risk of having other parts of the board interfering with your tests, such as like capacitors, because your multimeter can give a tiny bit of a charge to a ca capacitor that's in the same circuit as a diode. So that could kind of give you a false reading. You might think, oh, that's a bad diode when it's actually a good diode. So it's always best practice to take the diode out and test it completely out of the board. And then you get a much more accurate reading. So that's the basic test actually with, you know, a continuity and a diode test on your meter. Um, basically, those can help you with quite a bit of areas of problems. Uh, wire harnesses, for example, if you are playing a Pac-Man game and let's say this Pac-Man is not moving up anymore, you can actually use the continuity test on your meter to make sure that the micro switches or the leaf spring switches uh, are actually working properly. So when they contact together, are they connecting the pot, are they connecting the ground wire to the signal wire to the board? And if they are, then you can test to make sure that the wire going from the switch to the board is actually good, and so on. So there's a lot of things you can actually do with this. All it takes is a little bit of practice, and anybody can actually check diodes and continuity on any game. All right, that'll be it for that. Uh, on to the next project now.